welcome back. Sorry that you can kind of see the edges of Body Shop. I'm trying a different screen recorder and it locks to the program, but there's like edges around it, so I gotta figure that out. But anyways, we are once again working on the different faces challenge. In particular, this is Snow White, the second version that we're doing, and this is I consider kind of my version or like I mean, I really heavily based this on the original art from 19-something, I don't remember. But some of the original art, it's actually linked in the Wikipedia, and yeah. I also looked up a couple different, like, beauty standards of the time when the kind of fairy tale first became notable, that we have record of it. Because I figured, you know, they're describing the most beautiful person. What's well, going to be the most beautiful person of that time period? Because beauty standards change. I did pick out her dress ahead of time because I wanted something at least close to the pictures that I was referencing. And yeah. I really like how she turned out. Like, I think she's really pretty. But she also is not, I guess, she's not how I expected Snow White to look. So I don't know if it's really my version or just like the original historical version, but yeah. Because I've made her once before. I had a neighborhood. I never shared it or anything, but I had just like a fairy tale neighborhood where I created the Disney princesses like in the order the movies were released. So like we had Snow White and then I played all the way through until whatever age gap she has between the next princess, which I think was Cinderella. And then I added that princess, and like that's how I was playing the neighborhood, which was interesting but odd as well. And then I had like other fairy tale characters from just different fairy tales that Disney hasn't done. And my my Snow White was different. Pro she probably had more modern beauty standards injected into that one. She was kind of based on Gal Gadot and Haley Atwell and things like that. Oh, sorry about that. It's my alarm for medication. Yay. And the attention span of a gnat, and I will not remember. I also have a backup alarm, so it'll be fine, but that's why I have alarms on my phone. But anyways, yeah, she doesn't really look like how I expected her to turn out. Like, I didn't have any very many expectations going in, which is odd for me. Usually I have an idea of what they're going to look like, but once I started creating these features in a sim that I was seeing in these illustrations. She has a very tiny mouth. I was able to get her nose where it basically is only like nostrils, like the rest doesn't exist because that was the art style. She has really big kind of droopy sad sad looking eyes, which is great. Like she's got the kicked puppy thing down. And I was able to get even a headpiece that kind of matched the art too, so I was happy about that. Yeah, definitely, definitely not, not what I would have thought. I don't know, my brain, I'm, my brain is a little bit scattered. I've also might have, I've been painting a lot, so who knows what that's doing to my brain cells right now. I just finished painting the wall behind me, and I scuff sanded my desk and did a coat of spray paint on that to like prime it and yeah I had a little mask on but you never know I actually have to go buy more paint because I don't have enough I thought a quart would be enough but black paint when you're going over a light color I, I need to do more coats it's okay but it's gonna bother me and I'm sure because it's nighttime right now I'm sure in the daylight I'm gonna notice even more spots and I'm too obsessive to not fix that, so I have to go back to the good old Home Depot and buy more jet black paint. Which everyone's like horrified, because of course I shared what I was doing with my family. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm, I went from, I'm not going to paint any walls, it's a waste of money, you shouldn't do that in a rental, because you're just like, why bother? It's temporary. To four months in, I painted a mural in my partner's office, and now I'm painting parts of my office. I also have wallpaper, but I'm not going to permanently put it up. I'm actually going to fix it to the wall using upholstery tacks. Because I also think it will look cool, but I'm slightly concerned about the seams. We'll see. I might have to come up with a solution for the seams. But 
I really want to put it up. And I don't know when, I just was like, all of a sudden I just had this idea, I'm like, my loft should basically be, be goth a little bit, like it should be black and it's escalated very quickly. I've always liked the idea of living in a house that's like, each room is like very vibrant jewel tones, but all of like the liminal spaces that are not really any type of room, so like hallways, weird entryways that are kind of closed off, all of those being like solid black. <laughs> I don't know why that appeals to me, but I really like the idea of these spaces that are just solid black with maybe like gold star, like gold foil stars on the ceilings and just like dark. I, I really, I think I just want to live in a dollhouse, let's be honest. But I, I can't right now. I'm in a rental and I'm painting part of my rental black. It's fine, it's fine. There's so many dang holes in the wall too, like this property's been a rental for like 20 years and it drives me nuts seeing all the holes in the walls. So that's also why I've been painting because then I don't see them. Like when I painted the mural in my partner's office, I'm not even kidding when I say there was at least a hundred different holes in the wall, just like little thumbtack holes, but there's also like big holes from people mounting TVs or shelves. It's just, the drywall is just done. In some, well, in some rooms, not in all of them. I've hung a lot of pictures too to hide the holes in the wall, especially the really big and bad ones. Because houses weren't really built, especially like rental properties, except to have like these big mountain TVs, but as a society, that's where we've gone. And yeah, there's just... The landlord has not filled any of them. Because why bother? Like, he, I'm pretty sure he owns this property free and clear, so... He's very laid back as far as landlords are concerned. Like when we moved in, there's a room under the stairs that was completely painted, like it was clearly a child's playroom or something. One of the walls is purple, one of them is green, it's got her name on there. I just left it because I'm like, why am I going to paint this? I'm putting a litter box in this and I don't care. So it's still painted that way, but yeah. That was when I first was like, I don't think he'll care if I do any of this. As long as it's like not too egregious, I'm, pr I'm gonna have to paint over the black. I know that. But maybe not. Who knows? Because I'm not even painting full. I'm painting one small wall that has a giant window in it. And then I'm painting a section of wall where I have like a panel with lights in front of it. So I'm literally just painting like a strip of that wall. So I'm pro probably gonna have to paint over that. But I could possibly leave the, the window wall black. Who knows? I know people say dark colors make spaces look small, but I don't think that it does. For me, it just, it, they feel cozy, but they don't necessarily feel small as long as they're not decorated weird. But we've discussed that I'm a bit of a maximalist and it's fine. I'm just living in this minimalist world, this gray hellscape. I went to Home Depot earlier today and it was just like, I just went down the tile aisle because I was curious. And just everything is white and gray. Everything. Every single tile option. You look down the carpet aisle, every single carpet option is gray, white, or beige. And I'm just, ugh. Ugh. I'm tired of it. I've lived in places that are white, beige, or gray for far too long. Although ironically, years ago when I lived with my parents, I painted my room gray, but that was before it was like a super big thing. And I was just sick of white walls at that point, not knowing the ghost of Christmas future was gray. <laughs> no idea there, but yeah, that's, that's what happens everywhere now. I was sick, actually no, I'd lived in places that either had that 70s wooden paneling that wasn't real or white walls and I was just I was so tired of it. And so I went gray and that was, that was a mistake. Okay, I'm just gonna put some makeup on her. This is pretty much her final face. And as you can see, like I said, like her features are very doughy, nothing's really defined. She looks very young. Originally when I was reading the story, like, it sounded like she was a seven-year-old child, but then I realized it said she grew up into a young maiden, and I'm like, okay, I'll make her a teen, because I was going to make her a child. I'm like, fine, I'll make her a child sim. Let's just make this extra weird. But 
but she's got a really tiny rosebud mouth. Like I said, her nose, you really can only see like the nostril part. The rest is really undefined. And then just like the soupy, super droopy, soupy, gosh, like sad eyes. They're just like puppy dog eyes. They're so cute and pretty. And I, I am really happy with that. And then like wide, wide eyebrows. So then I had to find a hair because her hair in the illustrations is very slick and straight and silky and so I was like okay this has to be a really kind of straight hair. I ended up going with one a little bit wavy because I liked it and it had like I know it had a middle part as well but I also figured finding hairs that were going to work with the types of it's not a tiara it's not a coronet I don't know what to describe it's like when someone has a piece of jewelry right above their eyebrows and it's like a crown but not that type of deal. That's what she has in the illustration. So I'm like, okay, I can do this. I got close, got close enough, but yeah. I'm curious what you guys think of my Disney Sims so far. I know this is only the second one, but everyone is enabling me on the poll that I have. I think the poll's still going, but enabling is winning by far. So I don't know how many Snow Whites I'm going to do, but there's just so many cool versions. like. There's some from The Wolf Among Us has Snow White. There's a lot of really cool TV shows that are not necessarily what you'd expect. Once Upon a Time, yeah, but there's like a one called The Tenth Kingdom that I'd never heard about before. There's also like slasher movies and things like that that I'm just like, this is all so interesting. There's also like a 30 minute like mini movie type of deal and it's like about a modern court case. And I'm just like, I want to watch all of this now. So I might honestly watch whatever these are. Obviously, I can't watch like a full season of a TV show, but or in some cases, 13-ish seasons, depending. But I, I want to watch a little bit of it just to get an idea of how she's portrayed in character. I should have done that with when I did the Wives of Henry VIII. Honestly, I regret not doing that. Because, yeah, I can copy their faces, but it's really hard for me to get like a feel for them. I'd seen some, obviously, but some of it's also just really hard to get a hold of, whereas I think the Snow White portrayals, at least the more modern ones, will be a lot easier for me to watch. So I kind of want to do that. But let me know who is your favorite Snow White, if you have a favorite Snow White. I'm always curious to be like, what was like the portrayal that you saw? Was, was it Disney or was it a different one? For me, it was actually a tie between Kristen Kruick and like this TV movie because like visually she just meets the expectations. And um, Kristen Stewart, I think she had the visual expectation as well. And I just, I liked that we got more of the evil queen there. She was a bit different. Yeah, that was weird though. That's, I think, I believe that's, it came out the same time as like Mirror Mirror or something. It was like the competing Snow Whites. This happens with movies every now and then. Like you'll get two of like identical movies. And it's not really theft, it's just like people had similar ideas and they happen to come out at the same time. I watched the whole thing on it. Because there was two that are like Friends with Benefit movies that came out a couple years ago. One had Mila Kunis in it, I don't remember the other one, but things like that where you're like, this is basically the same movie, what are you doing? But that's why. And yeah, this is our Snow White. Like I said, pretty happy with her. I'm actually going to be uploading the downloads for these sooner rather than later, but it all depends on Sims file share. So if you like this video, please give it a like, and I'll see you in the next one.